everything you need to know about Saturday Night Live with John Schneider and James Stevens. Welcome, everybody, to everything you need to know about Saturday Night Live. My name is John Schneider from the Saturday Night Network. And I'm James Stevens, and we're back exploring season by season the cast members' sketches, characters, and backstage stories that have made SNL a television institution. So welcome to everything you need to know about season five of Saturday Night Live. Prior to the start of the season, John Belushi left the cast to further pursue a career in Hollywood. Weeks before the start of the season, with an offer on the table to make the Blues Brothers movie, Dan Aykroyd announced that he would not be returning. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. This allegedly caused a rift between Dan and Lorne. Eventually reconciling, the show did not see Dan's celebrated return until nine years later. Season 5 of Saturday Night Live premiered on October 13th, 1979, with Steve Martin's seventh hosting appearance. With the void left by Belushi and Aykroyd, what the hell is that? our cast consists of only seven players. Jane Curtin, Garrett Morris, Bill Murray, Lorraine Newman, Gilda Radner, and featured players Al Franken and Tom Davis. Come over here, look at this deal! As the season progressed, Lorne would eventually introduce us to some new cast members by upgrading some of the show's writers to cast roles. The season premiere would also introduce us to Harry Shearer, though he was not officially credited until episode two. I'm on the Perry Shearer! 36 years old and from Los Angeles, Shearer had previously worked on the National Lampoon Radio Hour. Our host for episode two is a sick Eric Idle who reportedly had a fever of 104 degrees at airtime. Uh, my doctor said I can go on as long as I'm not funny. Idle had returned for his fourth hosting appearance with friend Buck Henry on standby in case Idle was too sick to perform. Now I can give you the energy and the enthusiasm you need. Listen to this, live from New York, it's Saturday night. Well, I'll give him the shot. <laughs> Boston Celtics center Bill Russell hosted the third episode. We want to win that big game tomorrow night against the visitors. Yeah. The Nick the Lounge Singer sketch includes an appearance by future season six cast member Yvonne Hudson. Sucka. Hudson would continue to appear as an extra throughout the season. Buck Henry returned to the show with musical guest Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, marking their first of eight appearances. Actress B. Arthur would host next. The episode marks the first for band member and writer Paul Schaefer to be credited as a featured player. Paul Actor Howard Hessman makes his hosting debut in December. It's really a pleasure to be here and be hosting Saturday Night Live. After many appearances playing Father Guido Sarducci over the past two seasons, this episode marked the first for Don Novello to be credited as an official cast member. Martin Sheen hosted the penultimate episode of the 1970s with three epic musical performances from innovative musical guest David Bowie. Life is a pop of the cherry. When you're a boy. Actor Ted Knight would host the last show of the decade. In this episode, the sketch Nerds Nativity brought about a backstage battle between the show and NBC's standards and practices. The network standards contended that spoofing the birth of Christ was inappropriate, while the show maintained that the piece was actually spoofing children's nativity plays. Oh, no! The conflict continued backstage well into the show's broadcast. Although with some of the dialogue removed, the sketch did air, forcing production assistants to rush script changes to cue cards just prior to the sketch airing. Mark the hair lift angel <laughs> This final episode of 1979 featured the R&B influenced musical guest Desmond Child and Rouge. The pop rock band included a young G.E. Smith on guitar, who would later lead the SNL band for 10 years beginning in 1985. The 1980s begins with Terry Garr making her hosting debut. Officially joining the cast with this episode are writers Jim Downey, Peter Aykroyd, brother of Dan, and Brian Doyle Murray, brother of Bill. Murray brothers Bill and Brian marks the first time in the show's history that two siblings performed in the same cast together. Other notable firsts from this episode include the show's first George H.W. Bush impression, portrayed by Jim Downey. I'm not the sort of person who starts a job and walks away from it. I took the laundry downstairs, 
I sorted it, I washed it, I dried it, I folded it. Now I want to put it away. As well as Al Franken announcing on a weekend update that this was the start of the Al Franken decade. That's why I'm issuing this special commemorative coin, the the Al Franken Decade Medallion. Then, for the second time hosting, Chevy Chase returns to the show. During his monologue, Chevy alludes to the altercation he had backstage with Bill Murray the last time he hosted. Of course, that kind of stuff, well, it makes headlines. And in an effort to make peace, invites Murray on stage to join him in singing a duet. As long as every one of you out there and out here understand that we shot the sheriff, but we did not shoot no deputy. No, we did not. Reportedly, they settled their differences while filming Caddyshack between seasons four and five. The episode also features a new hand-painted opening montage, which credits Harry Shearer with a promotion to repertory player. Harry Shearer! Elliot Gould would return to host the next week, his last time with the original cast. I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I can do most of the things I want to do, and what I want to do is Saturday Night Live because it's different and it's got balls. The same episode features a running gag where Father Guido Sarducci attempts unsuccessfully to interview former President Richard Nixon. That's his house right back there, that the gray one there. Just a perfect color for him. Just a perfect. Next Saturday night, our host will be Kurt Douglas with musical guest James Brown. Well, James Brown will be replaced by Sam and Dave, with Brown not appearing on the show until the following season. Kirk Douglas hosts the episode. In five minutes, the ionization effect will wear off. We'll return to normal size, and if we're still here in President Sadat's mouth, we'll run the danger of exploding through his head. Well, then let's go. Followed by the next show with Rodney Dangerfield. I'm over to the bartender. I said, surprise me. He showed me a naked picture of my wife. In mid-March, the show achieved another major milestone, Saturday Night Live's 100th episode. For the first time, we have a show with no official host, though Paul Simon, James Taylor, and David Sandborn serve as our musical guests. The episode delivers many cameos, including Carrie Fisher, Ralph Nader, Michael Palin, along with Michael O'Donohue and John Belushi returning to the show. I wanted to come back and do a scene with a little class. Something that was good, something that was well written, but no! Another notable moment occurs in this episode when, during the medieval band sketch, Paul Schaefer accidentally drops the F-bomb. It froze the whole fucking time in all. Giving Schaefer the distinction of being the first person on SNL to say F on air. We then get a duo hosted episode with Richard Benjamin and wife Paula Prentice in April. She's in uh, more sketches than I am, actually. <laughs> Followed by host Burt Reynolds. Well, you know, you're still number one in my box office. <laughs> one sketch in this episode, Roman Vomitorium, a sketch in which a suave Roman attempts to pick up women at the local vomitorium, is often pointed to as an example of the show's stretching the limits of good taste in season five. I uh, couldn't help but notice that you're a very attractive woman. You know, you're very svelte, very petite. What's your name? Anorexia. <laughs> character actor Struther Martin would host next, marking his final television appearance before his death just three months later. How big is the cat? It's a little bitty cat. <laughs> what we got here is failure to communicate bilingually. The episode is also the first to credit writers Tom Schiller and Alan Zweibel as cast members. As we head into May, only three episodes remain of the original era. Lorne Michaels and NBC president Fred Silverman have yet to come to an understanding on an extended hiatus for the show or any real plans for the show's sixth season. The potential for any compromise from the head of the network was about to be in jeopardy as we head into the show hosted by Bob Newhart. This particular installment of Weekend Update features Al Franken as a news correspondent complaining about why he doesn't get limousine service from NBC. You know who gets complete door-to-door -door limousine service from NBC? Fred Silverman. <laughs> now, here is a guy 
who is a total, unequivocal failure. <laughs> okay, right. the guy's been here two years, and he hasn't done diddly squat. <laughs> And he gets a limo. After firing at Silverman on his own network, Franken urges the audience to write to NBC to give Franken a limo. Get Al Franken a limo. <laughs> Care of Fred Silverman. This character assassination would go on to be known as a limo for a lamo. Silverman, offended by this piece, believes it was Lorne's idea. Allegedly, Lorne had no involvement in the writing of Franken's piece, and even tried to persuade Al to tone it down. Al refused, and in turn, any effort to make a workable deal for Lorne was of no interest to Silverman. He's timid, indecisive, and easily pressured. He's weak. Our penultimate show, hosted by Steve Martin, is his eighth time hosting and last with the original cast. And I believe in the family. Mom and dad and grandma. And Uncle Todd, who waves his penis. In a nice callback to the first season, Paul McCartney makes his first appearance on the show, albeit pre-recorded from London. Yeah, I bet that it's, it's real hard to dance when you're not a stone. Am I right? This would be four years after Lorne made an offer for the Beatles to perform on the show. Live from New York, it's Saturday Night! We conclude the first five years of Saturday Night Live with Buck Henry. A man who hosted it 10 times in the span of five years, including four season finales. This is the last show of the year. Some people, in fact, think it might be the last Saturday night show ever. Buck Henry would represent a true gold standard for a host. He allowed writers certain freedom in sketches often dismissed by other guests, and was this era's father figure to the young, impressionable writers. We end on a high note with the memorable royal party sketch. Lord and Lady Douchebag. <laughs> I'm so frightfully glad you two could come. I was just asking Lady Salif Barry, where the devil are those douchebags? <laughs> Douchebag, how are you? I haven't seen you in the House of Lords in ages. Don't tell me, for the first time in memory, we're gonna have a parliament without a douchebag. <laughs> My dear sandwich, Parliament has always had its share of douchebags and always will. We're treated to some energetic musical performances and in its final moment, Buck, standing on the home base stage, bids the audience a heartfelt good night and goodbye. The camera captures the cast leaving Studio 8H. It then zooms in to catch the on-air sign and it's going off. The original Saturday Night Live has come to a close. By the time the finale airs, it is clear to the cast and crew that next season will look nothing like what had just preceded them. Laura Michaels, the show's creator and executive producer, decides to leave the show. A few weeks later, NBC announced that associate producer Gene Dumanian would take over the role of executive producer. Though the cast and crew were told they were welcome to come back, most declined any offer from Gene. The golden years were over. Season 5 is the bookend to the incredible story of the original days of Saturday Night Live. This season has often been noted as the writer season, where iconic contributors to the show's history were given the opportunity to make a mark in front of the camera. In addition, this season marks the final time that Jane Curtin, Lorraine Newman, and Gilda Radner would appear together in a canonical episode of Saturday Night Live. As we say goodbye to some legends, the big question becomes, will SNL survive without the original players? Join us next time, where we'll dive deep into the first season without Lorne Michaels. A show, once praised for being cutting edge, was now close to cancellation, only to be saved by a few unlikely people. If you're enjoying this series, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media as we share all of the sketches you need to watch from Season 5 of SNL. Saturday Night Live Season 5 is available now on Peacock. For all of us here at the Saturday Night Network, I'm John Schneider. And I'm James Stevens. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow.